While Kali Linux is the go-to operating system for most beginners getting into ethical hacking, Parrot Security OS is a strong contender with a vibrant community of users who have often solved a lot of the problems that would normally prevent me from recommending such an OS. Today, we're going to check out Parrot Security OS on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. There are many operating systems out there to choose from for people who are getting into ethical hacking, but many of them are not that straightforward for beginners and might be a little bit confusing. You might want to check out Parasecurity OS, which I've done a video on before, but kind of held off on recommending because I was worried that it didn't have enough documentation or a large enough community to be able to support beginners who were getting into trouble. Now I feel like it does have that, and if you're running into problems, you can generally count on the Parrot Security OS community to help you out and troubleshoot whatever's wrong. To run Parrot Security OS, you'll need to have a computer with enough space to run a virtual machine. You'll also need to download the disk image, which you can do from the website. And if you have any other questions, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description for more uh, detailed instructions on what you'll need to run a virtual box. Once you have everything ready to go, then we can begin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the default website, which is parrotsack.org. And we can see it's this really nice kind of a marketing site that has a lot of uh, screenshots and examples, and also a FAQ, uh, a community page, and a lot of other stuff that makes it really easy to get started with this system. So we'll go ahead and click on download, and then we're going to be running this in VirtualBox. So we'll click on security, and then from the download page, I would strongly suggest selecting a torrent. If you are gonna download this by yourself, obviously it's uh, either 3.7 or 5.9 gigabytes. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and select the smaller one because it's not that difficult to set up a virtual machine. So go ahead and click on Torrent and download the uh, Security Edition 3.7 gigabytes, uh, not the uh, virtual appliance. So if you don't have a Torrent um, program, then you can go ahead and use Transmission. It's one I like very much, uh, but whatever you wanna to use to download it, you can go ahead and do so or download it directly if you really want. Now, one thing that you should do is make sure that you compare the hash. So you can get the hash values here. And when you finish downloading, uh, I'm using Mac OS, but you can go ahead and in a terminal window, oops, SHA sum, and then just drop in the file. And we can do a quick check like this in order to make sure that we're not downloading a version of Parrot Security OS that might have been tampered with, or maybe have some other programs dropped into it after it was released by the developers. Now this might sound paranoid, but this is something that actually happens, and there were a number of users who were compromised when they downloaded various types of software from a trusted source where the download page was the only thing that had been compromised, and someone had added on some software later that made it so uh, you know a backdoor opened or something else malicious happened. Now we can take this value and of course compare it and see that, hey, it does in fact match. And really this is something that you should do if you're going to install an operating system and use it often. So we know because these two values match that nobody has changed this program since we've downloaded it. So now let's go ahead and begin setting it up in our virtual machine. Now I already have a Parrot Security installation here, but I want to walk you through the steps of doing it. So first we're going to go ahead and click on new and then we can go ahead and select the memory size of, let's do about half of what we have available, and we'll go ahead and create a virtual hard drive now. Oh, and let's name it as well. So we'll name it Parrot. So under type, we'll select Linux and then Debian 64. And then we can click on create, uh, where we'll select the hard drive size. Now we're gonna create a dynamically allocated, which is a little bit slower, but will be more flexible. And I'm gonna leave this at eight gigabytes, but really, if you have the space, you should you can go all the way up to 20 or so. I'd recommend maybe 20 to start. So I don't obviously have very much space on this computer right now, but I'll go ahead and click on create. And since it's dynamic, it should be okay with that. And there we go. We should be able to just click on this and start it up. So when we do, there's going to be a couple of different options for us to choose. 
Now here we can see that there's no optical drive. So let's go ahead and select one. And we can see we have our Parrot Security OS here. So we'll select the ISO. And once we do, then we can click on Start. And we have all these options for how we want to boot it. Now, if you want to go ahead and run it in live mode, we can do this here. Or we can go ahead and scroll down and instead install it, which will give us the ability to do this on the hard drive. And we will basically have persistence, meaning it'll save everything we do on it. If we update it, we won't have to re-update it the next time we run it. So I highly recommend installing it onto the disk, which is a pretty simple process that you just kind of click through the installation to do. So whether you're running it in live mode or you pre-installed it, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it both will run fairly well and both will be a lightweight, easy to use system that you can rely on to kind of get started with hacking uh, without needing to rely exclusively on Kali Linux. So if you want to very quickly see what the installation process looks like, you can check out right here the standard installer. We'll select English, United States, or wherever you are. I'm gonna click out of these as well. And here, you'll go ahead and enter in the root password. Uh, select it again. And then add your username. That's the username for your account. And then a password. And again, we'll select our time zone. And now we're going to deal with a portion that's going to have to do with the disk. So we'll use guided, use entire disk. And you don't need to worry because this is only uh, selecting the virtual disk. It doesn't have access to your actual entire hard drive. You'll go ahead and select this. Um, and then we'll select all files in one partition. And there we go. As soon as we write, uh, we click on finish partitioning and write changes to disk, this will go ahead and run the install process. And while this does take a little bit of time, so I'm not gonna do it now, that is the last step for being able to get this done. And if any windows pop up, you can just kind of click through them. Uh, uh, but again, this will take quite some time. So I'm gonna go back and instead, we're going to use a Parrot Security OS version that I installed a little bit ago. So I'll go ahead and use ACPI shutdown see if it will listen to me, which it very well may not. Uh, instead, I'll go ahead and just say to abort the installation. All right, so now exit out of that, the system's down, power off the machine. So let's go ahead and select the one that we opened before. Now I've installed this one to the hard disk, so it should be a little bit faster. And I also ran an update, so some of the things that might be a little broken the first time we run it are actually up to date. Now probably the longest part of getting this running is making sure that everything is installed properly. So when you do APT update and APT upgrade, you can expect, depending on the speed of your internet connection, that this could take quite some time. Now, since I've already taken care of that, you can see we just boot to this nice desktop. And one difference between running this on a live USB stick and running it installed is that when you install it, it'll actually ask you for a login. Whereas if you're just running it off the live USB, it'll just boot directly to the desktop. All right, now we're on the desktop. And as you can see, Parrot Security OS is a pretty nice little system. Under applications, we have all the stuff we would expect to see under a nice, uh, maybe just a desktop system, but we also have all this nice anon surf stuff that we can just start if we want to hide our IP address. We have some tools to check our IP address to make sure that it's actually working. And then we have this. So Parrot Security has a lot of really interesting tools, many of which are not installed by default on Kali. So if we go, for example, to wireless testing, we can see that under 802.11 wireless tools is one of my favorites, Airgeddon, which is not installed by default on Kali, even though it's really effective at hacking WPA networks, WEP networks, and networks with WPS security vulnerabilities. So the fact that this comes with so many more tools is a really interesting way to get in touch with some of the up and coming tools that might not quite have made it into the Kali default repo. So you can check these out to find more interesting ones if you want to see maybe what's up and coming, but maybe will be in, uh, included in the next version of Kali Linux. So, all right, let's say that we want to take this MacBook and we want to start hacking Wi-Fi. 
Well, normally we wouldn't be able to even communicate with our wireless network adapter, but let's go ahead and click on devices, USB, and then we'll select our Atheros uh, chipset adapter here. Now, as soon as we do that, the virtual machine will connect that wireless network adapter to our virtual machine. And we'll be able to open a terminal window. And if we type ifconfig, we can actually see this Kali Linux compatible wireless network adapter here and ready to respond to our commands. So let's throw it into monitor mode and make sure that's working. And if this works, then we should see that our card is ready to do all sorts of bad stuff in Paired Security OS. And let's say that we want to just quickly check to see if networks are nearby. We can type arrow dump ng. WLAN01. And there we go. We can see nearby networks, which means that we can also attack them. So with Parrot Security OS, we're able to bypass a lot of limitations that might be on the host system. In this case, a Mac OS system that's not so well suited for Wi-Fi hacking. Now we can run a system that's similar to Kali Linux in being Debian based and has a lot of tools that you might not expect to see otherwise. So if you're looking for an alternative that has a lot of support in the community, this is a great place to start. Now, as a final demonstration, I want to go ahead and run Ergedin and see if we can get it to actually grab a handshake. We just go into Parrot, Wireless Testing, 8211 Wireless Tools, and select Ergedin. And as you can see, it seems to be running pretty well so far. It'll go ahead and check to make sure we have the required tools, which all of them appear to be green. We'll select our card that's in monitor mode. And then really quickly, let's try to grab a handshake. So we'll select option five. We'll select option four to explore for targets. And after we populate the list of targets, we can close out of this window. And then we'll go ahead and select option four. And then to run the attack, we will select option five. We'll go ahead and select our attack method, which in this case will be a deauth attack via uh, section one. We'll use the default timeout for 20 seconds. And then we'll press enter to open the window and begin the attack. There we go. As you can see here, we just captured a Wi-Fi handshake. Meaning in Parrot Security OS, we've managed to deauth someone, grab the WPA handshake, and we have a good chance now of actually breaking this handshake within our Parrot Security OS system. We've successfully stored the handshake, and now we're ready to brute force this at our leisure, which goes to show that Parrot Security can get you up and running with Wi-Fi hacking, or any other kind of hacking for that matter, in a matter of minutes. While we installed Pirate Security OS on a virtual machine, that might not be the ideal setup depending on what you're running. Instead, you can also partition your hard drive and install it directly there, or leave it on a USB stick and just run it live on whatever system you want. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you need any troubleshooting or run into problems, you can check out the Nullbyte link in the description. And if you have any thoughts for future episodes or comments, you can send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.